Hey there, everybody. Cindy Daychuk here with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in today. We've got a fun one for you, and I want to give a little bit of background. You know, I've been seeing everywhere about people making paper beads, and quite honestly, there are people that sell the paper beads that they made. Um, I, pro primarily, I see it on Etsy. There are paper bead making specialty tools. There are templates you can buy. There are the papers pre-cut that you can buy. Um, it, it's just gone crazy. But I wanted to share, I mean, back in many, many years ago, we're going decades, I actually had an online bead store. And I used to work with a woman in the UK whose husband was a doctor that would uh, travel to Uganda. Um, quite often to be able to provide uh, medical services to the people there. And one of the things that when she traveled with them that she discovered that there was a lot of women who, who had lost their spouse and were no longer able to live in their small villages anymore because of the wars and things. Their husbands were gone. They couldn't eke out a living there. And so they were forced to go into the cities. And they were actually um, working in the... <laughs> In the stone quarries chipping stone and so they wanted to find a way to be able to make a decent income get their kids in school that kind of thing and one of the things that they were doing was they were making paper beads and selling them and uh, so they were using any scrap paper that they could find and so what I started to do was through my UK contact was worked with those women in, in um, a particular group of women uh, buying their beads and selling them here. So I was giving them um, awesome pricing because I wasn't looking to make a profit on these so much as, as just being able to retail them. And they made beautiful bicones. It was funny because I'm kind of going, oh, okay, so these are awesome bicone shape. And they're going, what's that? <laughs> it's, okay, that's the shape of them versus, um, you know, long, long rice beads right? So more of a long rice shape. They did some of these really fat bicones, cones, which some people now are calling uh, bubble beads. And I never knew what colors I was getting. I never knew what sizes. I just bought them sight unseen. And these are still some leftover beads from those days. But I thought that many of you might like to make some of your own and they're not difficult to do um, and you kind of get into a bit of a rhythm and I'm not going to use any specialty tools I mean okay I'm using I'm using a, a paper cutter it makes life easier uh, the people that do this professionally they have mega crickets all set up and the crickets just cut page after page after page but you can buy templates that have uh, well you can buy the templates you can uh, download the templates that uh, make the kind of triangular paper. The, I cut some out of scrapbooking paper because you're gonna get tons of beads. Each one of these makes a bead this size. So kind of a nice little bicone size. The size of the hole is gonna be dictated by the size of the wire or dowel or whatever that you wind it on. You can make your hole as big or as small as you would like by virtue of that. Kind of makes sense. The tools that you get have um, a wooden handle. So if you're making a lot, it's probably a more comfortable way to go. And the metal has a little groove that you would put the first edge of your paper in for rolling. Um, so if you decided that you were wanting to make a, a million and one of these things, then okay, that would maybe be a reasonable purchase. If you were really wanting to, to make a lot and you did not want to have to cut your own paper, then no, you can go on to Etsy and you can buy packs of them already made. These beads, that are the big fat bubble beads, you would need to have either a lot longer paper than this or what's usually the case is that they don't cut the page to a point. The point is your finishing page. What they would do is they would have this piece 
start, start there to match the width of that and then go wider at the top. So it would be much longer. You might have maybe sometimes for a super fat bead, you might have uh, four sheets that you're, you're winding and then this size butts onto that size and then the next size. So sometimes it's staggered. We're just doing the simple version and we are cutting them down to size based on this. So what I did do is I cut my own paper down and I wanna take you in close to show you how to do that and how to easily wind your own beads out of any kind of scrapbooking paper, any old magazine papers that you want, any old um, wallpapers, any scrap paper that you have would work for this craft and give you completely different looks. But let me pull you in and we'll get started. The first thing that you're, wanted, you're going to want to do on the reverse side of your paper is kind of map out what's the, the length of the bead that you want to make. I picked three quarters of an inch and I marked off my lines along the paper to be three quarters of an inch. Okay? And then we want the tip of our bead. Actually, this is my three quarters of an inch up here. And then we want the tip of our bead to come in at the halfway mark. So I've drawn a dot here that is halfway between in the middle of three quarters because that's how we're going to start to create our triangles. So we're going to go, where's one that's gonna work? All right, so this is gonna edge off here meaning this side, I don't get a full, full bead out of it. So I'm gonna cut from here to here. This is my angle. All right, and then I'm just gonna swing this because this point is the middle of my bead. This is one outside edge, here's my other. Now here's the outside edge of my second and there's my point of my next bead. And so you can see that is creating two different beads. So I just start angling this up and down. To create the angles that I need. Then move those out of the way. Then I just simply take my cutter. Now, the nice thing about these cutters is there is a faint line when you lay this over that shows where it's going to cut. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna angle my paper and there's a tiny little wire there that just shows where that angle is, where the cut line is. And I'm going to make sure that it's running all the way down along my paper. That was my extra one that didn't work out. Now, what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just going to line up the next strip along the pencil line and cut it down. So there's my next strip. And here, I'm just gonna angle it again, right along that line. Oops, slipped there. There we go. And you just keep cutting your paper. So this is where the people that sell you the pre-cut strips, um, they're getting their Cricut machine to do that. But no reason that you can't do it yourself. And just cut a whack of them and then you can sit down and then you start winding your beads. So you're gonna go from your fat end and we're just going to get it started. Now this piece of wire that I'm using is just a piece of um, 
cut off floral wire. So it just seemed to be a good width for what I was doing. So the only thing that you wanna do is you wanna try and make sure that your bead stays centered. So by the time we get to the point that it's gonna be in the middle of our bead. So we just wanna keep lining it up and rolling it all the way down, just nice and slow to make sure that it's staying nice and centered. And then when, when we get toward the tip, we're going to want to glue that so that we can glue that in place and hold it. You can use any kind of tacky glue. I just happen to have this one, and what I like about it is that it's got a really tiny nozzle. But there's your bead, and then you just slide it off. And we just put those aside, and we let them dry. We are gonna wanna seal them with a poly. So once they're all dry and we've got those done, then I'll show you how to do that. Really, this just becomes a little bit um, addictive, right? Because once you get started, you're just sitting there. You've already got your cut paper and you just keep going. Now, if we wanted to make one bigger focal bead, we could take this strip that we've already cut and we could say, okay, great, you know what? That's gonna be the, the width that we're gonna match up, right? If we're making this longer, we're gonna match up that width. So maybe we decide to take it up to, so do maybe here. We'll just go slightly outside. So let me, Cut that one. And I'll just show you how to be able to get, oh, here it is. Let me figure out where I put everything. I'll show you how you can get the bigger bead look. We're just gonna cut out this one strip, get it lined up. Okay, so we're going to start wrapping with this fatter strip and it doesn't end at a point because it matches up with the other strip, right? So we're gonna start this the same way that we did everything else and this is where you can do alternating colors because maybe you're gonna do a bead that has, that's four strips long. So maybe this one is gonna be navy blue and the next strip is gonna be white and then the next strip is green and the last strip is yellow, right? Then you're able to get some of that variation of color showing up in all of the, the edging as you are slowly winding the bead edges in, right? I hope that makes sense. So occasionally you might be pushing some of your edges to make sure that they're staying relatively centered. <laughs> All right, so here we're gonna have this flap that we're gonna glue down. It's gonna hold it in place. And then we are going to glue this to that edge. So we want it to start where the other one left off as though it was just one long piece of paper. And then we continue wrapping. So you could see to get like a big fat bubble bead, 
you're going to have to need to have uh whoops much um like four or five pages with a much more gradual climb to your final pointed one. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how you create that continuous loop until you get down to that final, final wrap so that you could have a much bigger bead if that's what you're looking for. And to seal them up, you're just gonna to want to use the polyacrylic top coat of your choice. I've got some big top here. Um, it's not super glossy, so certainly if you wanted them glossier, you could go with a different coat. And I just have them on a, on a piece of wire. I just move them along one at a time, paint them off, and then I just hang this to dry. My beads are all dry, and I know this for sure because I actually went away on vacation. It's been a week since I did this. <laughs> I just left them. I, you know, it's easiest for, I have found, to just kind of put them on a piece of wire, something stiff. You, if you have a little dowel that's thin enough that would fit through and uh, paint them and just leave them hanging like this so that they're separated. Um, they're not gonna stick together once you seal them with your top coat. And then you can simply slide them off. Now, what I am gonna do is pull you in close. I mean, you can just string these however you want. It's really traditional, um, you know, like a lot of the, you'll see a lot of the African women or seniors that make these, that sort of thing. They'll just put um, some of the elastic um, beading, beading, well, the elastic beading, the stretchy beading elastic. That's the way to say it. So the stretchy beading elastic through it, and then, you know, maybe a little bead in between, and then um, it's just a simple, you know, pull, pull on and off kind of idea. But I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do, do it on a bracelet, and I'm using some supplies. Here, I'm just kind of trimming this one off because I kind of mushed the end a little bit. So I'm just going to cut it so that it looks better. Um, I'm, I'm reading some of my beading supplies. I haven't made jewelry in a long time, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'll, I'll do, I'm going to do something with these. I'm going to pull you in close. So I'm going to pull you into this camera. And then I'll show you a couple of the things that I did with some of the African beads that I had to give you some other ideas. Really, you can use them in any of your designs as you would any other bead. So you just treat it like you would a wood bead or a stone bead or a crystal or whatever. But you'll get the idea of how I'm doing it and uh, some of the ways that I've done it with some necklaces. And then you go wild. Make your beads. Do your thing. All right. I've got some little tools. This is what I have going on. Um, this is actually called a bungee bracelet. I have some left over from when I used to own a bead store. Um, you know, in another life. And what it has is when you pull it apart, you can see that it actually has some little dangling jump rings. And those are there for you to be able to attach dangles so that you get the dangles all around it and it just stretches and it goes on any size wrist. So what I'm going to do is create dangles from these. Um, and I'm gonna do it just very simply. I mean, I've got some old, head pins here and they've actually been water damaged. So they've got, um, well, it's not really rust, but something, and, and that's okay because it's gonna be hidden. And I just have these matte, um, just matte little, little teardrop seed beads. So I'm just gonna put one on the end, put it through. So. I just have a little drop like this. We're gonna take needle nose pliers, the needle, needle nose, like, sorry, round nose pliers. So they are really narrow here and they get bigger toward the tip. And so you can make bigger loops. And I'm just gonna take these toward the base, bend it over, and then I'm gonna wrap that around. And you can see, whoops, slide it down. See how it starts to make that circle. Now I can't close that yet because I need to slip that through 
one of those little hanging jump rings. So now I've got it attached through that loop on my bracelet. I'm gonna stick my pliers right in there. And now I'm gonna take that tail and I'm gonna wrap it around the stem. And then I'm gonna take my little cutters and I'm just gonna cut the rest of that tail off flush. And there's my first dangle. Oops, there's my first dangle. So what I'm going to do, because I have only so many and I don't know how many dangles, so I'm gonna cut how many of those jump rings I have. You can always add more jump rings to this if you want. All of this is strung on that stretchy cable cord that you could just simply string these with some beads in between, right? But I'm gonna count how many I have and um, space them out. If I have enough to do one on every one of them, cool. If I don't, then I also have some little pink crystal beads. Um, I have some little, little pearl beads. I have like pure white seed beads. I have little, little silver balls. I can create extra dangles and I'll do them in between. So let me count up, see what I've got relative to the number of beads that I made because I only did one batch. And um, then I'll just continue to add dangles in exactly the same way, regardless of what beads I put on it, whether crystals or my, my handmade beads or not. But I'm gonna, gonna continue with the dangles and then I'll show you what it looks like. And here's my finished bracelet. Let me put it on because it just looks like a bunch of dangles. So just kind of pretty, kind of fun, nice and lightweight, so very comfortable to wear. And that's one of the advantages of some of the paper beads. And they're just kind of super fun and super easy to make. Now, back from the days when I used to get the paper beads from the Ugandan women, I had made a couple of things out of them to wear to some of the bead shows to show people you know, how they could use them, what they could make. So one of the things that I still have, because I sold so many of them, was this big, long beaded chain. So let me, I've got, all kinds of different um, chips of some amethyst and some different quartz colors. And here you can see um, the multi-toned little bicones that they had made from whatever paper, whatever magazines, usually it was from magazines, um, old discarded magazines that they were able to get. Um, here's like a really long rice bead. So, um, I paired this with all kinds of different stones, some Laramar, and you can see it's just in a loop. There's no clasp. There's all kinds of dangles, silver beads, and I did it this way. So they would just come through the loop on the end, and you could wear it as just kind of like a lariat kind of idea, right? The other one that I did um, that I still have is made with some African beads that I had imported, um, coconut discs. Um, these are little vinyl, um, tiny, tiny, thin, thin, thin little discs that were, were um, so vinyl beads, large bicones from the paper beads, a lot of different wood. I've got some carnelian in there. This, this is some um, acai seeds and just uh, again you know just uh this has a detachable little piece so that you can just kind of hook it in wrap that around wherever it makes sense for you and we've got uh, a lot of the big bicones and the paper beads i mean obviously you can do whatever style makes sense for you um, this is a little flirty, a little bit fun, definitely pale. My granddaughter's coming to the shop to help me out tomorrow, so this will be hers. Um, and you can go in whatever direction, depending upon the color of the beads. Sky's the limit. It's all up to you. So I hope that you give this a try. It's just kind of a fun little project to be able to, um, you know, create out of maybe some some old scrapbooking paper that you have lying around or some scrap paper, period. Grab some old magazines rather than throwing them out. Turn them into some paper beads 
and uh, just have fun creating. If you give it a try, let me know. If you've got questions, let me know as always. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.